Yeah, we are. Everybody ready? <laughs> okay. Welcome, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, I hope the people in attendance can hear. I understand that the uh, wind is providing some feedback, so we have the, uh, the hopefully the, the cameras all have a good uh, feed, good, and can you hear us okay if we talk loudly? So uh, thank you all for joining us. Today we're releasing our roadmap to reduce emissions by 50% by 2030, and that's only six years from now. That's rapid uh, improvement in air quality, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, uh, improving health, doing our part to combat climate change. Uh, I want to thank uh, the whole team in our all-government approach to put a lot of work into this, state agencies and commissions, Will Tor and Dominique Gomez at the Energy Office, the Department of Transportation, uh, Shoshana Liu is with us, Department of Natural Resources, Dan Gibbs is with us, Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment, Public Utilities Commission, the Energy and Carbon Management Commission, which used to be known as the Oil and Gas Commission, Department of Agriculture, Department of Local Affairs. We have so many partners in local government with us here as well, the nonprofit sector, businesses, and communities across Colorado, uh, members of the General Assembly, and of course so many Coloradans who contributed ideas uh, to this important work. Our meetings in communities across the state, we had virtual uh, sessions online. Uh, this plan is really a reflection of the priorities and feedback that we heard across the state where uh, people are crying out for cleaner air and for us to do a better job leading uh, the nation on, on uh, reducing greenhouse gases. Well, I'm proud to say three years ago we released the first Greenhouse Gas Pollution Roadmap that outlined the action steps to cut emissions in half and make progress towards net zero. We have achieved 95% of the actions that were identified in that first roadmap in just three years. And that's why we need to raise the bar a little bit right now, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're identifying new actions, we're unveiling a new roadmap, doubling down on our work to save Coloradans money on energy bills, on gas, and advance our clean energy future. Uh, as Coloradans, we're so proud of the nation-leading progress that we're making every day uh, in fighting to reduce emissions. And we also know that there's more work to be done and more work that's been enabled uh, by the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act uh, and federal funds to provide transformational opportunities to further reduce greenhouse gas emissions here in Colorado. This updated roadmap continues to ensure that Colorado leads on saving people money, protecting our air and water, making progress towards 100% zero emission electricity by 2040, a sustainable, affordable, and resilient future. We're building on the momentum of the original roadmap and identifying many new cost-effective strategies that will further reduce emissions from transportation, from electricity generation, from buildings, from oil and gas, from industry, from agriculture, natural and working lands. Uh, you know, improving our air quality isn't just good for our own health and for the environment, it's also good business. And in fact, the strategies and the action plan in this roadmap will create an estimated 95,000 good new jobs as we move to net zero emissions by 2050. We know that achieving our goals goes hand in hand with the work to address our housing crisis. And that's why this updated roadmap for the first time, unlike the last one, really identifies the key ways that we can make housing more affordable and more sustainable in our state, including transit-oriented development. I think we timed it just right. That means helping people get where they want to go quickly, efficiently, at a lower cost, uh, and with lower emissions. And that's why we chose this particular location to highlight a big part of what's the future of Colorado with more convenient, lower cost transit to help people get where they want to go, less congestion on our roads, and reducing emissions. And uh, we know that we can and we will build affordable, sustainable housing opportunities near job centers uh, to further reduce our emission profile and make sure that people can afford to live in our wonderful state. And uh, that's why we're here at the Westminster RG RTD station. There's multifamily buildings, there's biking and walking trails. Uh, with this updated roadmap, uh, we really identify a number of the steps we're working on with the legislature and through Department of Local Affairs to help make sure that we can make living in Colorado more sustainable uh, and more affordable. 
In Colorado, we know that with innovation and collaboration, we can tackle these challenges we face, including climate change. And that's exactly what we're doing with the updated roadmap. We're bringing together state agencies, the legislature, local governments, transit agencies, utilities, and other stakeholders to get the job done to continue Colorado's leadership role in the country on reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Look, if this work was easy, it would have been done already. But I know that Colorado's future is bright, and together we can fight for clean air, save people money, create new jobs, and ensure a healthy, vibrant future that's more livable, sustainable, and affordable. Those are the fundamental values that underlie this plan that we're presenting today. With that, I'll turn it over to Will Tor, the Executive Director of the Colorado Energy Office. Thank you, Governor. It's such a pleasure to be here today to talk about this really important update to our greenhouse gas pollution reduction roadmap. The governor thanked the wide variety of people who worked on this, but I do want to do a special shout out to the Deputy Director of the Energy Office, Dominique Gomez, who did an amazing job coordinating this more than year long process. As the governor said, this update was really driven by the huge breadth of what's been accomplished since announcing the original version of the document in 2021. This is definitely not a report that just sits on a shelf. In a very short time, we've made remarkable progress towards meeting our climate goals. We've completed more than 95% of the near-term actions from the original roadmap, and based upon the action to date, are already projected to be 80% of the way to meeting our 2030 targets. That said, we're taking more steps to address climate change here in Colorado. This document lays out 49 new near-term actions to accomplish in 2024, 2025, and 2026, providing important direction on our next steps to achieving Governor Polis' bold climate action plan to cut greenhouse gas pollution in half by 2030 and make meaningful and concrete process, progress towards net zero GHG pollution by 2050. The Energy Office is ready to get started and is indeed already making progress in these actions. From streamlining the way we cite transmission and renewables, to making sure we can connect new electric vehicle chargers and heat pumps, to creating the framework for nearly carbon-free electricity by 2040, to securing new funding for industrial decarbonization and clean hydrogen, to leading a comprehensive climate workforce development strategy for our state, we're proud to be a part of this all of government approach. Roadmap 2.0 has new important areas of focus that we had only begun to contemplate in the original roadmap. This roadmap focuses on strategies that will harness new technologies, including geothermal energy, hydrogen, and carbon capture. It centers and prioritizes action based on environmental justice and equity, ensuring benefits are felt in disproportionately impacted communities. And one of the pieces I'm most excited about is the new strategic growth section in our near-term actions. It puts crucial focus on land use patterns, housing and transit investments, and transit-oriented development. We know that housing policy is climate policy, and re reforming land use to allow people to live near where they work is crucial to improving people's lives, lowering housing costs, and tackling the climate crisis. These actions will ensure that we're making the decisions today that not only reduce emissions with an eye towards our 24 and 40 and 2050 goals, but reflect the top priorities that we heard from community members across the state during this process. Access to safe and affordable housing and transportation options. Uh, with that, I would like to introduce my friend and colleague, Shoshana Liu, Executive Director of the Colorado Department of Transportation. Well, um, at CDOT, we're excited to build on our nation-leading actions that were part of the first version of the Greenhouse Gas Roadmap. Thanks to our uh, first-of-their-kind Greenhouse Gas Pollution Reduction Planning Standards, which came out of that first process, we've developed a national model for transportation planning uh, that Colorado established in late 2021 to build on more options for getting around and make sure that as part of our strategic planning process, we work with our local partners to really um, integrate multimodal transportation into our core plans. We're working hard to offer many more of these options in the immediate future. Bus rapid transit routes will run along some of the busiest roads in the metro area and will offer convenient high performance service through the heart of the area. 
We're working collaboratively with RTD, with Dr. Cog, with the other partner agencies to make sure that these priority corridors like Federal Boulevard and Colorado Boulevard that have been identified for years as needing this kind of service finally get it. And we're rapidly developing rail options also with partners from across the state that can offer train service both in the Front Range and a mountain rail option to connect Union Station, Jefferson County, Winter Park, Steamboat Springs, and Northwest Colorado communities like Craig and Hayden also contributing to our efforts to ensure a just transition. On top of this, we will continue to work with legislators to bring even more support for high quality transit options throughout our communities. And to make these multimodal options work as well as they can for as many Coloradans as possible, we know that thoughtful changes to the way that we build our communities can massively affect livability, quality of life, and have significant and consequential uh, climate improvements that we can achieve through working with other partners around the built environment. A recent analysis by RMI, a think tank that has actually been an important technical partner on this uh, greenhouse gas roadmap effort, shows that land use changes promote that promote livability allow people to shorten distances of travel and their daily commutes and, ha and can have uh, dramatic GHG reduction impacts and it actually showed the potential for these types of efforts in Colorado specifically. It lays out um, that in addition to thinking about traditional transportation in its own silo, we need to really think about how the different uh, factors in housing, transportation, natural resource policy and other things integrate and that none of these sectors can do it alone in the way that we've sort of traditionally thought about defining different subsets of the economy. So CDOT takes this work with significant ambition, um, knowing that there's a chance to work together with partners across the state and across uh, disciplines of policy to make a big difference that can have a huge and positive impact on our state. Uh, and with that, I will turn things over to uh, my friend and partner, Dan Gibbs. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Director Liu, Director Tour, and Governor Polis. The Department of Natural Resources is proud to support the state's efforts to reduce greenhouse gas pollution and looks forward to working collaboratively with stakeholders to implement the near-term actions identified in the roadmap. Climate change is a fundamental challenge to the department's work to preserve and enhance our natural resources from water to wildlife. The implementation of the updated roadmap will enable the state to meet our emissions reduction targets and contribute to the state's leadership in addressing the climate crisis. The Energy and Carbon Management Commission will continue their work to regulate oil and gas in a manner that's protective of public health, safety, welfare, the environment, and wildlife resources. The updated roadmap includes direction to the ECMC to continue to identify strategies to reduce emissions from oil and gas development. The Commission is also working hard to implement the new authority to regulate new and emerging technologies that will enable um, uh, the Department to, to work on such things as uh, carbon capture and sequestration and geothermal energy. I'm also proud of the work that our State Land Board has done to support the development of renewable energy projects on state lands and as we work to balance the conservation of fish, wildlife and, wild, and water resources. Expanding renewable generation on state lands both helps us to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and continues to diversify the revenue generated from state lands to support public education in Colorado. I'm also excited about um, the efforts of the DNR and all of our divisions are working to meet the state's climate goals. Um, so for example, our parks and wildlife, we're continuing to work to implement the state's natural and working land strategic plan along with a grant to support the expertise from the water conservation board cpw will also continue to lend their expertise to minimizing the impacts of energy development on the state's wildlife resources the division of reclamation and mining safety is identifying opportunities to reduce methane emissions from coal mines in our state and the colorado state forest service is working hard on our statewide assessment for carbon, for forest carbon and exploring opportunities to better manage our forest resources to reduce emissions. Together, the DNR's divisions have a critical role in implementing the updated roadmap and also reducing the greenhouse gas emissions in the state. And, 
and managing the impact of climate change on our natural resources. So we look forward to working closely with all of our partners and state government and local communities, industry and conservation organizations to meet this fundamental challenge. The future of natural resources that we love and rely on in Colorado depends on all of us working together to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and adapt to the impacts of climate change. So with that, I'd like to turn it back over to Governor Polis for any questions you have. Thank you again to uh, the team, everybody who worked on this. We should be proud of this nation leading document. I hope it inspires other states across the country to show uh, this kind of leadership to the advocates. Thank you for being part of this process, for sharing your ideas uh, with the team. And, uh, and really, I'm very proud of this. And now the work begins to make sure that two or three years from now, we've got at least 95% of these action Woo! items done. Uh, hopefully 100. With that, we'll open it up to questions from the press. Governor, you mentioned the first roadmap. Um, the expectation is that the state will miss that first 2025 statutory target. Um, when it comes to the overall approach that you have favored, flexible, iterative, all of government, what gives you the confidence that you, as we look at this new roadmap, that that will work better over the next five to six years than that has over the last five years? Well, we've seen amazing, tremendous progress over the last uh, uh, three years it was when the first one came out uh, and we've gotten 95 percent of the original action items done with a lot more work along the way uh, we for instance now uh, 17 percent of vehicles sold in our state are electric vehicles we were also to able to add a substantial tax credit around electric school bus conversion with school districts and additional school districts are converting over to electric with their new bus purchases we're continuing uh, to reduce emissions in uh, a number of different sectors we recently had our uh, building uh, rules to reduce uh, emissions from the larger buildings. So uh, the rulemaking is under very much still underway from some of the items in that first roadmap, and we're very excited to set the bar even higher over the next few years with the second roadmap. Is it your expectation that we'll miss the 2025 goal next year, or is there anything you miss with the head back then? Well, again, I, we're, we're always excited about setting goals that are, uh, that are ambitious but that are reachable. And uh, if a goal is too easy to reach, then it's not worth setting. So uh, we want to make sure that we can uh, produce cleaner air, reductions on uh, climate change inducing gases, and uh, we, we will continue to both c fulfill the items that are pending from the existing roadmap and then updated now to be more bold and aggressive with this new roadmap 2.0.